For nearly a century, Zambia's copper belt has been a global center for the copper industry. When industrial mining began in the 1920s, mines employed both migrant white and African workers. By the time Zambia gained independence in 1964, the mines employed approximately 7,500 white workers and 38,000 African workers. Although they worked side by side, white and African mine workers did not perform the same tasks. During the colonial period, there was a clear racial divide in the workplace. The highest paying skilled jobs were reserved for white workers who had formed a trade union and enforced a color bar. In 1960, the average white mine worker was paid nearly 10 times more than the average African mine worker. What is puzzling is that this persisted after Zambian independence, when there was hope that it would go away. Clearly racist workplace organization had become increasingly unacceptable in the 1950s, and the color bar had been removed in the early 1960s under heavy pressure from the African Mine Workers Union. This created a problem for copper belt mining companies. White mine workers were paid very well, and the dismantling of racial divisions meant that these wages and benefits could be extended to Africans, with frightening implications for operating costs. The solution was to create a category for white employees called expatriates. This was clearly a racial classification. Even if they were born in Malawi or Tanzania, all African employees were designated as local. Even if they were born on the copper belt, all white employees were labeled expatriates. Companies defined expatriates as skilled, white. On the African continent, expatriates are common in the extractive industries and many other sectors. Typically, Expats are viewed as skilled professionals who take a short-term job in another country, frequently move around the world, and are paid significantly more than anyone hired locally. In the case of the Copper Belt, the category of expatriate established a dual-wage structure that has persisted. Expatriates received wages and benefits that no African employee, regardless of skill or experience, could receive. The companies hoped that this would alleviate aspiration for higher wages among African mine workers. The term expatriate was chosen to emphasize that white workers' wages were unattainable for African workers. Looking at how the mining industry connected seemingly disparate and distant places around the world and the consequences that resulted, one result was the spread of militant trade unions to the mines. Until the country's independence, all white mine workers were union members because their union operated a closed shop, you had to be a union member to work in the mines. Inadvertently, this set a good example for African workers on how to improve their position, and they, too, formed a trade union with a combative reputation. Both unions fought tenaciously and successfully for better pay and working conditions, but in their own ways. Workplace segregation was replicated in trade unions, and there was never a union on the mines that represented both African and white workers. Furthermore, one might wonder how the term expatriate, which has become commonplace in the industry, came to be. It arose as a result of deliberate corporate policy in Zambia's copper belt mines. The proposed solution to the threat of rapidly rising wages was to designate white employees as expatriates. This, paradoxically, meant that racial divisions were aggravated in some ways after Zambia gained independence in 1964. The mining companies saw Zambian independence as a huge opportunity to reorganize the industry. It was the perfect opportunity for the industry to set the standard and get things done the way they wanted. This is a rare opportunity for large-scale industries, and it is unlikely to be repeated. Politically, the companies anticipated that this would be a difficult pill for the government to swallow. White Zambians had played a prominent role in the independence struggle, and the United National Independence Party was officially multiracial. There was a Zambianization policy in place to replace white workers with Zambian nationals, but there were other policies in place to limit wage growth for mine workers, whose wages were already significantly higher than those of African workers in other economic sectors. Company executives wisely suggested to the government that, a local person, unskilled, should not be paid as much as a cabinet minister. 
Zambia's new independent government agreed to establish expatriate and local employment categories. As a result, African workers promoted to skilled jobs earned a fraction of what white workers earned. African artisans, which included carpenters, electricians, and mechanics, were paid roughly half as much as white artisans. Other benefits were also reduced. At one mine, promoted African employees who moved into mine houses previously occupied by whites discovered that the appliances provided for white employees had been removed. African mine workers were not willing to accept this. Shop stewards at one mine argued vehemently that they saw no reason why any differential should be established between themselves and the expatriate. Following independence, major strikes occurred, and mine workers received significant pay increases. This sparked conflict with the government, which cracked down on the Mine Workers Union of Zambia and tightened state control over the country's labor movement. The category of expatriate is rooted in both colonial era racial divisions and corporate decisions about how to resolve these divisions after independence. Expatriate was purposefully created as a racial category on Zambia's mines. The establishment of very different wage scales was a cost cutting measure. Two separate wage scales with no way to bridge them limited the wages that could be paid to local workers. Expatriates and locals worked in the same workplaces, faced similar risks and hazards, but had very different work experiences. Thanks for watching. If you like this type of content, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more stories.